Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. <coughs> oh, gross. <coughs> you want to try that again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? I learned it's on is Ivan Lake Jr. And it's me, Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Rachel, where are you? Where are you? I'm in Miami for the I'm in Atlanta. I'm in I'm Which in is Atlanta, why Miami. we're doing this podcast on a Friday morning. Friday morning. Um I'm I'm here for the Black Film Festival. What are you in Atlanta for? Oh, I saw that. I'm speaking at a marketing conference today. Marketing conference? Like what do you guys what do you guys got? We got we're gonna talk to them about. You're gonna talk to them about the power of suggestion. I will be talking to them about creating your own brand. <laughs> oh. You should like do you ever get when you have to give a talk, do you ever get scampish to where it's just I see people there and it's so important. And you can't help but be a little bit of a scamp. Like I, it happens. For to me, it's like I get up there and I just want to be a scamp and make people feel weird and say funny things and stuff. It's like right now you're talking about the power of marketing and building your own brand and stuff. You could talk to them about whatever you want, and they would love it because you're Rachel Lindsay and they came there to see you. So just scamp it up. Get get a little scampish on them. Well, the good thing is this is like a fireside chat, which mm-hmm. I much prefer. Like, I don't have to stand up there and give a speech. Mm-hmm. It's like a conversation. So, yeah, I'm sure I'll have some scampish answers in there. Scampish. That, that they'll, de- they'll be dedicated to you. Well, thank are you, you. Are you doing a panel? Are you doing a panel? Yeah, doing a fatherhood thing. I'm not a dad, but. I I had one. So uh, doing a fatherhood thing. And then also just experiencing the uh, a film festival for the first time. Working the rooms. You know, I'm doing a, doing a panel, working the rooms, talking to people, being the best. You know what I mean? Like doing... <laughs> okay. The, the, what? Doing, I'm doing my thing, Rach. Rachel. Yeah, you're networking. I get yeah. it. Yeah, you know how it goes. What you gonna do while you're in Miami? Nothing. How long? You... I Nothing? come back Sunday. Nah, dog. I'm not. I'm not like. No, I'm not like that. There, there, no. there, I mean, there's got to be like a, a bunch of events surrounding the festival. It's gonna be. There's a dinner tonight. There's gonna be a couple of things. I look outside the room and I see what I'm gonna be doing. They got the pool out there, and then I can walk to the beach. So I might do That's some of that. That's nice. But other than that, I, I'm I'm not the person that does it. You know, I don't do it. Like, I'll okay. go to Vegas and chill. Like, I don't do it. When I'm, when I'm in well, New York. Yeah, me too. I'm in New York. I, I don't I do not do it, man. I, but I, I don't have the stamina for it now, but if, when I look back, I never really did. I never really That's, had the stamina to get it. there's something wrong with that? To each their own. I know. Had I known well, that, I would have taken back your invitation last week. Let's see. Can't get over stuff. <laughs> Can't get over stuff. I would have like, taken it back. I have this great I therapist know. Uh, that I go see, David. And if it was, and if I was in front of him right now, he would, he would, he would, he would, he would I was telling him, he'd say, that was a shot. You need you don't you don't say that. You you deal with that in a better way. Uh so you're you're in Atlanta. So let me ask you this. Uh-huh. I see you. Do you pack a robe or do you wear the robe of the hotel? I wear the hotel robe. You're a robe aficionado. I I I love a robe. I got the slippers on. I like to make myself at home. That's why I have you, to stay in a nice hotel because I really want to feel comfortable. I can't sleep if I'm in a bad hotel. Like, I, I will get really in my head and, um, like, it's bad. Yeah, and getting in your head, you can get trapped in there. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I was on the plane. On the plane. On, uh-huh. What did you say? Nothing. What are you saying? 
What'd you say about my head? <laughs> I didn't say anything. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. What are you saying? Yes, you I'm listening. I didn't say nothing. Go I got to watch what I say on this podcast because shout out to the lovely thought warrior that I met on the plane. <laughs> she turned around to me and said, I know you don't like to be bothered on the plane. I know you don't like that. <laughs> but I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> and I felt so bad. I was like, oh my God. I'm so glad you said hi. I was like, I'm so glad you said hi. Oh my gosh. I don't want people to think that I mean. I just, I just said like to myself on a plane is what I meant. You can always, hello, Thought Warriors. You can always say hello. I love to meet Thought Warriors in the wild, but I felt so bad. She was scared to say something to me. Is, is she talking about the time you made the stewardess scrape no. the cheese off of the no. sandwich? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my god! <laughs> no. Oh, speaking of that, no. I'll let you know. I, I realized something this time. That hmm? L.A. Miami flight is a monster. I don't a beast, I, 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 right? I, I normally, I, I, yeah, I, I normally, <laughs> I normally sleep, but I flew in the middle of the day. So this time I I only got like an hour. That 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 flight is a monster, man. That's like a, that's a little G. That's a. Uh, that's why yeah. I like to take an overnight. Cause that I, do, that's, I normally that, do too. That probably messes with your sleep. Cause I took mm -hmm. I took a day flight to get to Atlanta, and it took me. I mean I don't I'm a little under the weather, so I kind of passed out due to sickness. But then I woke up, and I could not sleep for hours. I probably didn't go to bed till three. I could not you ever sleep. heard that song, Down With The Sickness? No, no. you're down with the sickness. You know, there's a down with the sickness. You ever heard that? Is this a Louisiana special? It's not a Louisiana special. Donnie, have you heard that song? She said sick. She said she's under the weather. She's sick. You ever heard the song, Down With The Sickness? It's, it sounds familiar, but no, I can't did sing along. No, it did. No, it did. No, it really did. Have you ever a movie or a TV show? Ashley, have you ever heard that song, Down With The Sickness? I mean, it, I'm going to agree with Donnie. It sounds familiar, but I cannot place that. That's because the song, all the songs that Van makes up sound like that. That's Why are you guys, <laughs> why am I being treated this way? You know, because it, it, we waited this, 20 minutes for you to hop on this podcast. It wasn't 20 minutes, man. I was, it wasn't 20. Dottie, down, Ashley. Down, down with the sickness. It was recorded in 1999. It's by Disturbed. And it's by, it, from their debut album, The Sickness. The name of the sick. You guys never heard Down with the Sickness? Ben? It's heavy metal. So no. <laughs> I'm looking it up. It's a heavy metal song. I know, but it's it's like it it I don't know, man. It, it it these are the stuff I I start to feel like I'm not gonna lie that I had like a weird upbringing when I'm on the podcast sometimes. No, you know? I I think you have one of the most interesting upbringings when you tell stories. You're very you are a very curious child, and you like you had a lot of different interests. No. Don't feel that way. I have heard it. It was at the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. That's Dawn of the I Dead. Know. Yeah. It was a oh. Dawn of the Dead. Down with the sickness. Donnie, you Without are right. Down with the sickness. Donnie, you Without are right. Getting down with the sickness. <laughs> you, you never, it, it, was, it, it was, it was. I totally it was, remember it from the movie. Yes, Donnie. Yeah, it was. You ain't never seen Down So now Dawn do you feel dead. less weird? You ain't never seen Down of the Dead, nigga. You don't know I have. You never ah, seen it. Were there trapped the in the mall? What's the chances that the judge, the judge, you snuck, you snuck out to go see Isn't that? Isn't that the movie was, where they're trapped in the mall? Yeah, it's the movie where they were trapped in the mall. How did you get a chance okay. to see that? Actually, you were grown when that came out. You were in college. That's what I was going to say. I was past 17. Yeah, so you could go. When you turned seven, when you turned 17, were there like a bunch of different movies that you just ran out? Did you like, rebel to go no you know, because as i've told you 17 years of being told what you can and can't watch you just learn to find other interests so i wasn't running to the theater mm. to find to you, watch stuff you were taking it out with people on the basketball court el elbowing people get down with the i was pretty i was pretty uh i was pretty dirty on the basketball court 
That is crazy, true. Crazy. Be like, just, just want to let you know, everyone is looking at you differently now that you read those Zion tweets. So don't talk about you get dirty <laughs> and all of that stuff. People are looking at you. Like, you have you have many people. I heard. I saw all, some messages. People were like, "You look like you said this before." First of all, like, come on, guys. By the way, I just want to let you know that y'all are some freaks out there, and and you guys know who I'm talking to. Some there's some famous men that were like, oh, "Bro, you know, I never looked at Rachel kind of like a." Who was she was reading who them was... tweets. I, now I'm like, I'm telling you guys right now, y'all some freaks and there would be uh, Rachel is a pure woman of uh, the walls of Jericho alright we were just <laughs> reading tweets <laughs> who was it who was it you know every um, time you say that it makes me want to sing the song <laughs> cause man like you know I, I was when I was back in Baton Rouge I felt the uh, the presence of the Bible Belt Cause you don't really feel it in LA. <laughs> you but don't was, feel it in LA at all. You don't feel it in LA. LA is you don't. But when I was back at home, I felt it. You know, it was churches all over the place, and you know, it was all of that stuff. And I was like, "This is I'm back within the walls of Jericho." Okay, we gotta go. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh, up and down show today. I'm just letting you guys know in terms of the topics. Um, some very serious things to discuss and some bullshit. Um, but we're going to get to YK Osiris and why men just can't understand the concept of sexual assault. It's the big deal of the day on the other side of this break. Uh, Rachel, are, are you familiar with Sukiana? I am. I do know who she is. Suki. She's a rapper. She's the, on the Love and Hip Hop. Atlanta. Is it Atlanta or is it Miami? Suki with the good coochie. Um, she is a rapper and a star and a hilarious personality. She's very, mm -hmm. very, very funny. She is funny. She is un, uh, untamed, unhinged, uh, unbridled, and lots of sexual energy. Sexual energy in her raps, sexual energy in her personality. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, but she's entertaining. She's very entertaining. <laughs> it was like uh, just recently she was talking about how she wanted to have sex with Dr. Umar. And I did not hear that. <laughs> oh, man, that was so funny, man. That was so funny. She was saying she wanted to have sex with Dr. Umar and uh, Dr. Umar responded. Oh, he did. What did he say? He, he didn't say no. He okay. didn't say he didn't say no. It was funny. The whole thing was funny. All right. So people have been talking about an incident that happened at the Crew League. The Crew League is really it's a fun thing that happens where uh rappers and their crews compete against each other in a league. The crew league is fun. All right, shout out to Funny Marco, who I saw there hosting the crew league. Uh Lil Duval was there. And on on the crew league commentary. Uh, on the, uh, the the thing right there, giving commentary on the game was Sukiyana, Suki with the good coochie. Uh, she was there, and there was an incident caught on camera where YK Osiris, uh, was a young R and B singer, uh, kissed her, and he kissed her. Uh, and he continued to kiss her in a sexual way. Um, and she looked uncomfortable. Rachel, did you see mm -hmm. the video? I did. I did uh, see the video. What did you think when you saw the video? It was disturbing. Mm. But for a number of reasons. Like, as okay. you described, he he doesn't just kiss her. It's, you know, it starts out where he's massaging her shoulders mm -hmm. and I think he kisses her tattoo and he walks away and he comes back and he grabs her face and forcibly kisses her and does it twice. And you can tell, as you said, she was uncomfortable. She's kind of moving away. But as equally, it, it, it bothered me because obviously he grabbed her and kissed her 
She didn't ask for that. She didn't consent to that. But then also equally upsetting were all the people who stood there and watched, even if they were in shock, stood there laughing, were high-fiving YK Osiris, or were just silent. That was just as bad to watch. I mean, you could tell from her body language that she was rejecting that, that she didn't want that. And the way that he came over to her and grabbed her in that way, it, it felt to me like he didn't even look at her as a human being. He didn't wait for her, like, as if she was void of any feeling and any emotion. He felt like he could take advantage of her and control of her. And his actions made the reaction of everybody else almost co signed that, even if they weren't the ones participating in it. And if I had one feeling to walk away, I would say it was disturbing and it was really, really hard to watch. And I think the reaction that I've seen has been split. And that's alarming as well from both men and women. Because just because, as you said, Suki with the good coochie, just because her lyrics might be um, sexually charged, that's not an open invitation to mistreat or abuse her. Uh, It's a form of expression. Whether you agree with it or not, it does not make it okay to take advantage of her just because her lyrics or even she on a microphone might say something. And I just don't understand how that could even be up for debate. And I don't understand how this isn't a bigger conversation about the way women are objectified. Um, so there was a conversation that happened before the kiss. And in that conversation... Uh, Suki and YK are going back and forth and she's saying, boy, I'll turn you out and whatever, whatever. Um, no, no, no. I don't need to hear it right now. Uh, uh, just put it in the post. Um, if we, if you put it in at all, I, I haven't made up my mind because, uh, it, I, I, I'm, I'm sick of this. You know, I'm, it has been people on both sides of it talking and I'm starting to realize just how fucking idiotic everyone is. And mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm at my wit's end with it. You know, it's breathtaking sometimes how we discuss the same things over and over and over again as it relates to right. racism. Right? As it relates to racism, we sit here and we marvel why white people don't understand why they can't perform blackface. We'll sit here and have a conversation every year and a half about why white people uh, don't understand why it makes us uncomfortable for them to say the Mm N-word. And why being willfully obtuse about something that's so easily understood is part of what's maddening about being black in this country. And then I got to watch us mentally joust about watching this nigga put his whole face on this fucking woman. Mm -hmm. Uninvited. I could walk around right now with my dick out. That doesn't mean I want you to suck it, whoever Mm -hmm. you might be. You know, it's... People... Do you understand what you are saying when you are saying that if you talk about sex, if you talk about what you like, or if you have an image that exudes and projects sex, that you are subject to everybody's sexual whims and actions? Do you understand how archaic and stupid that is? You're stupid. You're not. No, it's not. There's nothing to discuss. You're dumb. You're dumb. You're stupid. I'm not entertaining it at all. It's ridiculous. YK Osiris has apologized. He said he misread the situation. Young mm-hmm. brother, I'm not trying, I'm not gonna be the one to kick you in the nuts with a steel toe boot, but I am gonna push on you a little bit. You gotta fucking be better. 
And everybody mm-hmm. out there who's looking at that and making excuses for that type of action, you need to be better too. There was a time when you could look at a lady and because she had makeup on and because she was dressed a certain way, walk over to and, and do whatever you wanted to her. Yeah, that time is over. And what I mean by that is it wasn't cool then, but right. there was a time when there was no societal punishment for that. We're trying to get away from that. And just listen to everyone work so fucking hard to excuse that behavior or to make it seem like she in some way invited that is crazy. Y'all sound like, to me, he had a hoodie on, so I thought he was a thug. He had braids on, so I thought he was a thug. You walk like a thug, you dress like a thug, you get killed like a thug. That's all I hear from y'all. All I hear from people are, yo, just because um, I'm a young black brother in this particular situation or I'm from this place, I shouldn't be judged like this. The motherfucker put his whole fucking mouth on the woman. Well, like, what? Well, I mean, well, well, for like, he put his whole fucking face in the woman. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. And said he didn't mean to disrespect her. That was his apology. Look, how do you I, not? Go ahead. No, I, I just you said something about. You know, there was a time when people did that and it and it was never cool, but we don't talk about it in the same way or we've moved past it. YK is 24. That's a whole different generation. And he walked up and did that. We're not past it. You got people like Meek Mill, who it wasn't until his third tweet, he tweeted about this, which made YK seem like he's a victim for this hypersexual uh, society, particularly with men. He was making excuses. He called him a kid. I, I don't think we're past it because at 24, one, you got other people making excuses for him. And at 24, he felt like he could do this. He saw nothing wrong with this. If this hadn't gone viral and people hadn't reacted the way that he did, there was nobody in that space holding him accountable for what he did. And that's why I say the people who sat there on that, who were right there at that table are just as much of a problem because they didn't do anything to stand up for Sukiana. Not one thing. Nobody had her back, which perpetuates this type of thinking and behavior. It was just just as disgusting to see nobody be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not okay. Not one, which almost meant they, they thought it was okay. They didn't see anything wrong with it. I would love to hear from the other people who were standing right next to her when that happened. Um, I just think that we need to take this as an opportunity to have a more impactful conversation surrounding this. I'm not saying to cancel YK. I'm just saying this is this issue isn't getting better. Um. So Sukiana, Suki, has uh, talked about this. She tweeted about it. She said she drinks. She said this is what she said in the tweet. I drink to hide that I'm very sensitive. She wrote in the tweet. She deleted it. Uh, I feel things more than the average person. I stopped drinking yesterday, but I've been crying all day. I ask God to strengthen me and use me to help others and to order my steps in this world. I just want to go away from it for a while. Uh, in another tweet, she said she's hurt and scared to stand up for herself. Like I said, YK said that he misread the situation. Um, there was another incident with her that I saw. She was on mm. a podcast. Uh, Donnie, see if you can find this. She was on a podcast and it's, she was on Candy Burris's podcast. Candy has a co-host on the podcast. I'm not familiar with the brother. Um, but apparently, like, people that listen to Candy's podcast, they he's a comedian um, or he's uh, someone who knows Candy. Uh, I'm not in any way trying to um, talk shit about this brother, but... Uh, I, the only reason why I say that is because I saw people in the comments over this discussing discussing him and talking about him and talking about his relationship with Candy um, and everything. 
And I saw a clip. This was even before the YK Osiris thing. Mm-hmm. I saw a clip of her on Candy's podcast. And this guy was talking about what he would do to her uh, and how he would do her. And then he showed her a picture of his dick on his phone. Uh, play. Mm. I make that pussy spit. And I know it do. I, I watched you walk in this motherfucker. So you can tell by my walk? I can tell by your walk that pussy spit. Hey, you a country nigga. Where you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Camerton Road to be exact. <laughs> What's happening with it? Since oh, yeah, I know I'm smell your pussy. I won't put my face in your pussy. You say, Suki with the good coochie, you know what I'm saying? You be talking about how good that motherfucker smell and all that. We can go to the back and, and I can come back and you give up. You want to smell my ass? I want to, I might put my tongue down that motherfucker. Oh my gosh, A1. But we're going to start with the sniffing though. You are aggressive. She love that shit, man. Look at her. <laughs> She I, like that old no, shit. I don't. You love that shit. No, I mean after like during sex, maybe, but mm. you know, that not 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 right now. <laughs> nah, all that shit you talk. <laughs> Fuck that. You done met your match. I'm here. What's up? So listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This man. Is okay. okay. <laughs> so if you watch the video, um, and you listen to it, she is uh she is um she's uncomfortable. She says, right now, mm-hmm. I don't really want to talk about it. And the brothers, she says his name. Uh, Candy says his name in there. A1. It's another part, like I said, where he shows his, he, he, he holds up his phone and apparently it was a picture of his dick on the phone or whatever. Uh, and, you know, that came out even before the YK thing. And it's just, the the entitlement there is is dangerous. And I'm not saying that we're, we are past it. What I'm trying to say is we're trying to be past it. Like, we're trying to put that in our rear view. I never remember, I never forget back in the day when um, Adrian Brody, like, won his uh, Academy Award for the piano. And Halle Berry, uh, like, uh, presented him with the Academy Award. And um, he grabbed her face and he kissed her. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at that like, oh, huh? and my mother is like, what? She's like, are you fucking, cr-? that white man just grabbed her face and and she was hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She was hot. Yeah. And I'm looking at that like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's not okay. That's not okay. We've had an ongoing conversation about the way we're going to treat the women in our communities. And it's not, and they don't have to, a woman doesn't have to qualify to be treated with respect. I know that that was the thing that we would, that that rap music told y'all. I know rap music told y'all that a woman had to qualify to have her sexuality and her body respected. That's not true. A woman doesn't have to qualify. There's no... There's no credit application for a woman to have her body and her sexual sovereignty respected by you. It's not. Yeah. It's not on her. It's on you. It's on the type of person you want to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm. And I'm just. It's. It's. It's getting old. Like it's getting old, trying to explain this all the time. You know, it's yeah, just, it it's, 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 it's getting old trying to expl- explain this. I've heard so many people, oh man, that's how she wanted to talk, blah, blah, blah. If she starts talking to you about that, talk to her about that. If 50 Cent was sitting right in front of you, right there, you know how corny it would be for you to have a conversation with 50? If 50 Cent sitting right there in that interview, I know one thing that guy's not going to ask 50. Yo, bro, you ever killed anyone? Right. That's not gonna come up. Like that's not you're not gonna. Hey, bro, you ever you ever you ever. No matter how much you talk about killing somebody, right? No matter how much any of these guys talk about, you're not gonna be like, hey, bro, how many you ever kill somebody? Like, tell us about the time you really put in work. Like, where you sell dope? They're not gonna do that because you're gonna look corny. Because even if he discusses that, you know that you're not going to. There's a there's a thing there. You're not gonna violate him by talking about his past. Unless he brings that up to you. But you can put your whole mouth on the woman or tell her that you want to put her, your face in her ass. <laughs> you niggas got to grow the fuck up. It's wild. It's oh, wild. I'm, I'm sorry. And, I, and, and I'm not trying to be hyper-righteous. It's just like, there's no way I'm not 
I'm not a good, I'm not the good guy. I'm not. I'm not the good guy. I'm the one of the dirty niggas. I'm not the good guy. I'm being for real. But I'm saying, you can't put your whole fucking mouth on the one. Okay, let's go. I don't know. But, but, but just, just, you're not being righteous. It shouldn't be looked at as righteous to treat a woman with respect. It just should be. We shouldn't look at that any other way. Man. All right, bro. <laughs> I just watched the whole, I watched everybody make excuses. I watched a lot of people that I like have a great deal of respect for try to play this the other way. Talking about, I niggas grow the fuck up, man. For real. Ladies and males. Okay. I just don't, I just, I wouldn't even want to talk to somebody to understand the other side. The I just don't understand how you could even try to rationalize that. Yeah. Just because uh, okay. she's sexually liberated. Yeah. If you want to ask her about her lyrics, if you want to talk about her lyrics to her, that's fine. If this was a situation before we go, if this was a situation where someone asked, where someone read Sukiana's lyrics back to her mm -hmm. and then asked her about it, not like not in a way of examining her lyrics, talking about it, like you rap, you rap about these things. You've said this in a song. That's all above board. That's all above board. Yeah. I even mean, in the 50s, even, even it. Even in the 50 example, if you want to talk about something he said in the song, that's all above board. All of these things started talking about who she is and what her real life is and I want to fuck you type shit. What the hell, man? I just can't get over the fact that people don't see it as a form of expression rather than that is exactly who she is, what she raps about. It makes me think of um, Nicki Minaj one time was talking about Future and she was saying how she was shocked that Future was like, no, nah, I'm really a lightweight. Like all the all all the drugs that Future talks about in his songs, he was like, "I really, I'm really not even doing all of that. I'm a I'm a lightweight. I just I just be rapping about it." And so it's like, it doesn't necessarily mean that because they're rapping about it, is exactly who that person is. And people have to disconnect the two. And that's why it's like, if you want to ask, like you said, then ask, and you can find out who Sukiana is off the mic. Otherwise. Yeah. Right. Respect her. Okay. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. is a racist. Um, the Wall Street Journal reported that emails written years ago between Donald Trump Jr. and his friend Gentry Beach. These people got some white-ass names, man. <laughs> Gentry Beach? Gentry? This motherfucker's name is Gentry Beach. Um and other businessmen could be made public. The emails reportedly include disparaging comments about Jews and Mexicans uh, wait a minute, are considered a side battle to a case filed by Beach some 15 years ago against his former hedge fund employer, Taraji P. Capital Management. And it says it's Taraji Capital Management, but that looks like Taraji to me. So I'm going to say Taraji P. Capital Management. According to the Wall Street Journal, the, email were part of, the emails were part of a new legal defense by the hedge fund, which argued that the messages bolstered its argument that Beach was disloyal to his employer and exposed the company to reputational harm. Hmm. Uh, uh, in one of these emails, uh, Donald, Donald Jr., Don J., Don J., 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 said that uh, the Beach family's move to Upper Manhattan, um, he referred to it as Harlem, due to the number of black residents now living there. I hear the theme song of the Jeffersons playing in the background. Uh, and another one, he says, Antara encouraged the Mexicans to come to the U.S. and give them another excuse not to learn English, he wrote. When I have to speak to my grandchildren in Spanish, at least I will know uh, I have you to thank. Beach responded, we're going to stop this WB issue in its tracks. WB being a, I don't feel like saying that. I'm not going to disrespect all of the Latino listeners of the podcast and Mexican listeners of the podcast. You guys know they say a word. It's, it's disparaging to Mexicans. Um, okay. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. is a racist. You know why I thought this story was interesting? It's because why? 
no matter how much evidence that we get that there's a race problem inside the Trump organization, inside the Trump mind, inside the Trump family, you still have those that defend the former president and the people around him as not having any racial bias when all of the evidence is to the contrary. Uh, and when we get these conversations between people, do you look at this as jokey jokiness, whatever, Jefferson's theme song, all of that stuff, or is this signs of deeper entrenched racism inside the Trump mind to you? I mean, the first thought when I, I mean, the Jefferson, <laughs> whatever. You like that. It's, <laughs> I, listen, you like when that? I saw this, I was like, oh, well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Where did he learn all of this from? Where did he learn to have this uh, it, it embedded racism or inherent racism within him. He learned it from his father. He learned it from his surroundings. They probably talk like this all the time. This is nothing. When I saw this story, I'm not shocked by it by any means. I think it's very obvious at this point. I mean, look at how Donald Trump, not even in a covert way, has overtly talked about um, Latino and Latina people. Like, he's outwardly been racist. So the fact that Donald Trump Jr. is making these type of comments to his friends or on their group email chat, this was not just the two of them. This was their uh, University of Pennsylvania. It was like a group email. You know, nobody corrected him. Nobody said anything. Like, this is just how they talk in their circle. They are racist. I mean, the way you just said earlier how we have these conversations over and over again about racism or respecting Black women, we could do this all day with the Trumps. They're racist. And whoever's going to see them as race, uh, people who can't see that yet or don't, they see it. They just don't want to acknowledge it. Nothing surprise. Surprise. So you're not voting, you're not voting for Trump. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not voting for Trump. You sure? You, you have this thing with DeSantis. I'm not sure. You seem like you, you have a soft spot for DeSantis. Do I? I'm in DeSantis country right now. Yeah. And you're loving I'm it. I'm in DeSantis country. To tragic news now. Olympian Tory Bowie, uh, she has passed away, 32 years old. Um, she was found dead in her bed while eight months pregnant. She was in labor at the time. Heartbreaking. Um, possible complications included respiratory distress um, and eclampsia, which is related to high blood pressure during pregnancy. Um, the manner of death was deemed natural, according to the medical examiner's office. This underscores a very serious issue about black maternal mortality. Uh, the black maternal mortality rate um, for our sisters, 69.9 deaths per 100,000 live births, almost three times the rate for white women per the CDC. Rachel? I'm sure you heard about this. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, obviously, this is tragic news. And the need to even hear Allison Felix, who has been very vocal about Black maternal health from her own experience, say that out of the three, uh, she's talking about her relay. There were four of them. Three of them have been pregnant. Two had near-death experiences and one died. And these are women who have access to health care. These are women, you know, who might not be in a, a different or who are in a different socioeconomic status than other women who are even at a higher risk and they're still dying. Um, everybody should go. For, well, first off, let me say this. Con Black maternal health has been on the radar for a while. I mean, maternal health just in general. Uh, in the United States is worse than any other country. And Black maternal health, as Van already pointed out, the statistics is even worse than that. And so you can't say this enough that you have to advocate for yourself because nobody is going to do that more than you can. You need to talk to your, you need to make sure you're providing your health, uh, you're telling your health care provider every single thing that you're feeling. You know, don't try to, I feel like a lot of times as black women, especially, we we carry a lot. We do a lot. We're like, oh, you can. I'll I'll work through that. No, you need to be advocating for yourself. You need to be proactive. Um, there's a website, www.cdc.gov/hearher. 
There's a Hear Her campaign, which has a lot of information of people telling their stories, of different resources, of what you should do in regards to making sure that you're fully equipped and educated with the information that you need to, as a Black woman that's pregnant, women and pregnant in general, like I said, maternal health is just bad in the United States, but specifically women of color who are likely to die, three times more likely to die in pregnancy than white women. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't advocate for that enough. And, and there is a bill that they're trying to reintroduce. I know the build better, you know, I say this wrong all the time, build better act, build better, Mm -hmm. better build, build back better, build back better act. I know that within that act, they did provide funds, more funds for maternal health care, but still more needs to be done. You know, as you see, people are still dying and the rates have, um, have not changed in regards to how high they are that black women are three times more likely to die than white women. And there's a bill that's being pushed, the maternity, black maternal health momnibus act, which is going to try, or they're trying to save mom's lives and address, um, uh, maternal mortality, morbidity and disparities within the United States. But to hear that another woman and and women continuously, not just uh, Tory, are suffering and dying from from childbirth is just it's tragic. Um. So, Rep. Uh, Representative Lauren Underwood, who is a Democrat from Illinois, uh, she has been trying to pass that package of leg- legislation for a while now. Um, she was on Face the Nation. Uh, I think it was in in May. And she was talking about how uh, how excited and optimistic she is that things will get done now. Um, and she says that she has bipartisan support for it. It's a disparity that must be looked at uh, in a very direct way. You know, I don't want to take the death of Tori and make it. Um, I don't want to diminish her life. Uh, you know, she's a gold medal winner. She is a singular life and a singular woman who 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 passed away. And I want to make sure that there's space for her family and the entire track and field community to grieve over what happened to her. Um, but I agree with you, Rachel. It is an opportunity for us to not an opportunity. It's not an opportunity. Her passing away, there's no opportunity in her death. Um, what I'm saying is it demands not an opportunity to, it demands that we have a conversation about, uh, about black women, um, and their treatment, um, and the access that they have to healthcare and life-saving interventions while they are pregnant. Uh, the pregnancy and the identity of black women, uh, as mothers has never been respected um, or protected in America. The first way that black black women, the first identity that black women had in this country weren't wasn't as mothers; it was as breeders. Mm-hmm. It was as people who passed along more commerce and more product to capitalism and to white supremacy, and so their only value was in how tough they were and how they had to give birth in the toughest uh, and the most um, degrading and inhumane of circumstances. These niggers are tough. Um, And they can give birth even with whipped backs um, and even after working out in fields and all of that stuff. And, you know, growing up, I would hear my mom and other people talk about, you know, how difficult going through labor was it's almost like a it's like a cliche i was in labor this amount of time and i went through this and this is why you should revere me and i don't want to hear that i carried you and all of that stuff like that and and i get that and that's it's 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 almost um charming in the way that a mom like relates to a son or to a daughter reminds them the sacrifice that they made for her uh, but women shouldn't have to sacrifice their lives. Uh, being a mother is 
a gigantic sacrifice. It's giving of your body. Mm -hmm. um, it's giving of your will, your time. It's giving of a huge chunk of your soul. Um, parenting in and of itself is that. But this is just another situation where we're asking too much of our women. It's just another situation where we're asking too much of them, where they have to shoulder too much. And it's not a problem that's an isolated occurrence. It's something that is, statistics show a nationwide trend, a worldwide trend um, of black maternal mortality. And we have to just, we have to address it in a completely comprehensive way. We have to address the uh, medical care that we're getting prior to becoming pregnant. We have, to we have to address the environmental and nutritional deficits that we grow up in uh, before someone gets pregnant. We have to address mm -hmm. um, the way doctors treat and relate to Black people, Black women specifically. Like, Black people aren't as healthy as we need to be. And there's, and, and part of that is because no one cares whether or not we live or die. You know, like nobody, nobody gives a shit whether or not we live or die. So we have to care. And we have to push right. those people that we have, um, that we have empowered uh, through policy, through, through elections. We have to push them to make sure that we care. So rest in peace to Tori. Um, you know, we almost lost Serena Williams this way. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 it got so bad. So, uh, I would love to have the representative on this podcast so that we can continuously have this conversation, a living conversation, a living conversation about black women living uh, in childbirth and in, not in childbirth, to see black people healthy and thriving um, and not just surviving in this country. But you know, my heart goes out to everyone in the track and field community, to the family of Tori. Uh, it's just, you know, I don't know, man. It's just, this is, it's a, it's, it's a, another one of those things to where it should be a much, much bigger issue than what it is. But uh, we seem to only come to it when there's a fire to be put out. Mm -hmm. Um, Supreme Court. Are you surprised at some of the decisions being rendered by the Supreme Court? Are you surprised, Rachel? Um, no, but maybe this one, it's a conservative court. So no, but the one with the child, the, the Indian, okay, I'm saying this is so wrong. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not surprised. Interesting. I am. Uh, in the in the seven to seven to two decision, Supreme Court upheld the Indian Child Welfare Act against challenges that could have gutted tribal sovereignty and led to the adoption of native children into non-native homes. The opinion by Justice Amy Coney Barrett in the case of Holland versus Rakeen rejected all constitutional challenges brought brought by both foster and birth parents. Um, and the states of Texas, Louisiana, and Indiana against the law. Now, we should say, maybe this is close to home, because Amy Coney Barrett has adopted two children from Haiti. She's got two black children that live with her. And, oh, that must be interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but the case involved a challenge brought by, brought by foster parents um, a birth mother and the state of Texas to the federal law that governs the adoption of native children who have been placed into the child welfare system. That law prioritizes the placement of native children into native homes and is seen as a keystone of respecting tribal, tribal sovereignty and remedying the historic injustices committed by the U.S. government in separating native children from their families. Quote, the Indian Welfare, the Indian Child Welfare Act did not emerge from a vacuum, Neil Gorsuch wrote uh, in his concurring opinion, but rather as a direct response to the mass removal of Indian children from their families. 
um, in the mid 20th century, which was in turn only the latest iteration of a much older policy of removing Indian children from their families. Of course, Clarence Thomas dissented. Niggers are going to nigger. He was uh, he was joined by Samuel Alito. Uh, the court is on a little bit of a streak. Some would say this is important. This is important to um, this is important both symbolically and obviously directly uh, to see the Supreme Court uh, respect the sovereignty of indigenous people to this country. Uh, I think they should be celebrated for 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 building the cultural uh, the, the cultural bedrock which America was then built on, only once they built on it really destroyed all those people to 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 build their nation. But um I think this was important. And I I, I am surprised that the it court was here. important. Yeah. I I guess I think that when children are when it comes to children that they're a little bit more understanding, I guess I should say. I and to so. me this yeah, not I mean abortion doesn't count. Not, I'm not talking about the Dobbs decision. Oh yeah, they, they but that's not. Fuck. But that's dealing with that's before they're born. So I I th- I feel like and their reasoning is for is in they would say advocating for the birth of the child for them. So I feel like with children they seem to be a little bit more understanding. Dobbs outside of it because I think that's a different. That's not apples to apples. So I wasn't shocked by it, but also like. This is so glaringly like wrong for them to decide the other way that I also wasn't shocked. I mean, what Native Americans have been through in this country and this whole policy of removing the children from their families so they could whitewash them has been going on since the early 19th century. And with the whole policy of kill the Indian, save the man. So you know, Gorsuch really was outspoken in the fact that this is, like, this act was a direct response for hundreds of years of mistreating Native American children, families, and culture, stripping them. If if they allowed this to happen, they would literally be doing what was done in the early, starting in the early 19th century. They would be stripping Native American children once again, from their families. They'd be doing the exact same thing. So to me, this was so obvious that this was the right thing to do. I'm not saying other decisions that they've done the opposite of weren't the same way, but to me, I guess I wasn't as shocked that it was seven to two. So I don't have the information in front of me right now, but I'm going to go look and see how the Supreme Court, like, what their record and shit having to do with kids is. And I bet you I uncovered some fuckery, Rachel. I don't I'm like sure the you Supreme did. Court. I don't. I, no, I don't know. I didn't. I mean, I. I, I mean, I'm sure it. you will. I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. you will. But um, to me, with this, it's like, come on, come on. I wouldn't put it past them. I'm just I wouldn't put it past that. them, but I wasn't yeah. like shocked. Rachel, do you know how many native people it's estimated that European settlers killed? I mean, indigenous millions. People. I would imagine 50, millions. Fifty-six million people. I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. I just, you know, it, it, I'm looking at these numbers, and you know, I, I'm, you know, it's, I'm, I'm happy about the results of this. Uh, this, this is very important. But they decimated them. They killed them all. Mm-hmm. How can we all talk about that every day? I mean, not even in a, just not even in a, in a, not even in a, I, once again, I'm not righteous. Like, I'm not, I'm an asshole. I really am. But how come we don't talk about that every day? They, they killed all of them. They killed everybody. They just came over here and killed up everyone. 
I get it. I, I get it. And the ones they didn't kill, they tried to change. They uh, literally they, tried to strip these. They tried to strip them from every single thing that related them to their culture. If they didn't kill them physically, they were killing them mentally. They came over. They killed up everyone. Then for decades, they made movies where they were the bad guys. They being the people that got killed up. Yeah, you know, good on the Supreme Court. Uh, I'm glad, but woo, it's a it, it 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 it's tough. I think it's the family unit is is a is central in maintaining cultural identity and practices. So what you don't want to see is through forced assimilation, or even even not forced assimilation, even like just like uh, accidental assimilation or circumstantial assimilation to erode the culture of a people. Um, you know, I see the, the indigenous people of this country like doing everything they can to maintain the, their culture, their way of life, who they are, who they've been, uh, the the remaining land that they have, you know, you think of things like Standing Rock, you think of all of these situations, you know, I just wish that we could respect the humanity of people who weren't white. Sorry. I don't know. It's early, guys. I, I haven't, like, I'm sorry. It's, it's, I'm, 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 I'm grouchy. I didn't get hardly any sleep last night. I flew in and there was no sleep. I couldn't sleep, Rachel. Do you, how do you sleep when you, when you're on the flight? When you're on, when you, after um, you get off the flight, what do you do to sleep? Well, I, like you, I mean, I had a hard time going to sleep last night too. But what do I do? I take melatonin. Okay, melatonin. That that usually yeah. th it helps me. Is it isn't that a fun word to say, melatonin? I guess I haven't really thought of it like that. <laughs> Have you heard about people who are using melatonin so they can go out and party, put their kids to sleep? Have you heard about this? Oh, they give it to their kids. Yes, I've heard that. Isn't that wrong? Shouldn't you yes, not do that? Yes, it's wrong. Yes, it's, it's wrong. It's like I've heard before. <laughs> yes. Hey, melatonin, knock them out. And then you leave and go do your thing. I'm like, what the fuck? Guys, that's so wrong. How Isn't Like that, that wrong? party can't be that important. No, yes, yes, it's well, wrong. It depends on the party. Depends on the party. <laughs> is there a party okay. that you feel like is worth knocking the child no. out for? No. No? <laughs> no. It's, it's a couple no. parties. You've never partied. You, have you ever been in a party that was so good that you're like, I'm glad I don't have kids because I would be missing this? Sure. Have you ever been in any situation to where like sometimes, you know, we, we all want a family, but then sometimes you look at your friends and you're like, nah, I can't. I got to be with them. And you, I, you. I'm like, ah, ha, nigga. But I felt that way <laughs> now. And now I look around, I look at my, I'm a, I look in the mirror sometimes. I look at my reflection. I go, "You childless bastard!" Look at you. Okay. You know, like I'm, sometimes, sometimes. Are we? Hold on. Are the four of us? Are we zero children, higher learning people? Yeah. Donnie, you you don't have any kids? No, not yet. Don't you know this about Donnie already? <laughs> like, I don't would know. you know I, if Donnie I, I, had a I, child I at this point? Not really, man. You never know with Donnie. Donnie's the type of guy that, like, he just might not be talking about his kid. You know, Donnie, Donnie would be the type of guy, his son would be named Samson or something like that. Nah, I got a I kid. Like he's, he's, he's seven. His name is Samson. You know, he lives. I would bring Samson up every opportunity I could. Yeah, of course I, you, you would. would. Y'all would be annoyed with the Samson Of course stories. you would. But you're so private, though, Donnie. You're so, you're like, you're very private. So I think maybe... If you had Samson, if there was a lady from a previous relationship in Ann Arbor and she had your kid and you might not talk about it. You know, I don't it might believe be that, Donnie. Not for one second. Uh, yeah, I, I see where Van is coming from. But uh, no, I still would. My, my kid, I know because I am private, but even if my kid and I were estranged, y'all still would be very well aware of his or her existence. You would just be like holding up pictures of the kid just crying. 
I wish I could be there for my boy. I wish I could be there for my baby girl. But her, I, it would be so funny to get Donnie on some Tyree shit. You know, like we, we're talking about families and stuff. And then Donnie's in here like, yo, you know, I, you know, I want to see my baby. But her moms, her moms won't allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? You know, like we just get Donnie going. And then do y'all know niggas like that? Ashley, do you have any children? Uh, nope. No children. We would know. <laughs> I don't know that we would know. Ashley is even more prized. I just can't Donnie. get over this. <laughs> I just can't get over this. Ashley is even more <laughs> private than Donnie, man. I don't know the name of one of Ashley's friends. Except for the white girls that she was at in London. I don't with. know Donnie's friends. Donnie, who are your friends? Who, who do you hang out with? Uh, I got friends named Travis, Ryan, Will Bostic. <laughs> these is uh, <laughs> these is my versions of He's gonna say the player proof crew. My uh, the are they all black or some of them white? No, they're all black. Travis, Ryan, what? Bostic, yeah. It, he didn't believe you. That's why he laughed at Travis. Oh, uh, yeah. No. He thought Travis, Travis was white. Travis, Travis is from Jackson, said Will. Michigan. Um, Travis grew up around mostly white people, but uh, he is very well a black man. Travis, Ryan, and Will Bostic? Mm-hmm. Will, Will, Chica Will Aggie. Bostic I, is I don't his know name why I forgot was... Chica. Chica Aggie as well. You're friends with Chica? Chica. There's she hates Chica. children. See, Chica, this Chica is a man. He's a Nigerian man from Houston. Dr. Aggie, I should say. Oh, uh, he, he he going through it right now. Because, like, the other Chica, <laughs> it, she she had a shout out to her. I'm not even trying to pile on, but she had a <laughs> rough couple of weeks. They were all over Chica. I know y'all saw it. Did y'all see it? Yeah, the baby's on the plane. Oh, Rachel. So, uh, oh, yeah, Chica was on the... um. Uh, by the way, I would like to say this though. So I did not agree with with what Chica <clears throat> tweeted, but I do think that our the fact that we love to pile on had as much to do with the reaction to it than what she said. Because I thought what she said was pretty whack. But the fact there was a problem. So Chica, Chica was on a plane with a couple of babies, and she wasn't fucking with them babies. I'm not even gonna bullshit <laughs> you. She was like. Man, these kids are screaming, and she said she she was mean about kids, and she was she tweeted it, and then she said because their mother was promiscuous having the kids and fuck the what? kids and fuck the they screaming in my ear. I'm trying to rest. Uh, and it turned out that the kids were Ti's grandchildren. <laughs> it's true. Isn't that what a war, weird fucked up world we live in? It's like fucked up. The, 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 and everybody was on her ass about the kids. It's like, I can't even talk about kids like that. And then they turn out to be two little black kids that's Atlanta royalty. And Chica did not move off her square. And that might be it for Chica, man. Like, it, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, and I don't think it's totally fair just because I think that, you know, sometimes people double down like once they're attacked and stuff and the pile sure. on was just crazy. Everybody's piling on and piling on and piling on. And she's been so open about the fact that she has uh, 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 that she, you know, deals with mental health issues, but it was, um, it was nuts on there. Rachel, how do you miss this stuff? It felt like everybody was talking about Chica. 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 I, I don't, if it was on Twitter, I definitely missed it. I just like, Sometimes you'll send tweets and I'm like, how did that, how does that even come up on his Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I I get on Twitter to try to like check the news and stuff. I don't know what I, I have to type in, but I don't get these tweets. I don't see this. What kind of tweets do you get? What do you see? Go on your Twitter right now and tell us what you see. Um, okay, Ashley, let me tell you. Ashley, go on your Twitter right now and tell us what you see. I want to know, this is called Rachel's Twitter, down with the sickness. I want to know what's on your what what's this like is a, what's on my um what's on what's my, on your um, timeline right now? What's on your what's timeline? What's on my timeline? Okay. Because I'll go to I'll go to I'll go to what's on my timeline and we'll see how our timelines are different. Let's okay. See. On the main timeline. I'm not going under trending, I'm going under for you. Just no, don't go under for you. Go under oh. what's just go under the what the just go under the timeline, my nigga. I okay. am on this oh wait. Oh, wait, timeline, not... See, I don't even know how Twitter works. 
like the people I follow. Just the yeah, just like the time. Oh my god, is that the timeline? Is yeah, that the well, timeline? Like, well, yeah, I yeah, hate Twitter. Okay, okay. what's not what's, on what's your trending? Timeline? Not what's trending, but people I follow. Trending. There's people a difference. You follow t- okay, so what what's on your trending? What's your trending topics right okay, now? Okay, thank tell me, you. Tell me what your trending topics is. Gonna. Okay. Hashtag Friday morning, Friday okay. feeling, Friday vibes. Hmm. Good Friday. Friday motivation. Hmm. Eva Longoria. Okay. Rove. Okay. Finally Friday. First okay. suit Friday. Happy okay. Friday. Okay. Luna is free. What the fuck? Um. Okay. <laughs> um. Someone named Kim. I don't want to pronounce the name wrong, but um, Korean music. Doja, Juneteenth. It is Friday. Mm-hmm. Today is Friday. Sacred Heart of Jesus. I mean, do I just keep going? Okay, so this, these are mine. Terrence Howard, Eva Longoria, The CGI, The Flash, Doja, The Incredible Hulk, Connor, College Board, Ray Lewis the Third, rest in peace to Ray Lewis the Third, man. Mm-hmm. Conquer Calf, Flashback Friday, Extraction Two. <laughs> this shows that I don't get on because all I have are like <laughs> hashtags. You know what I mean? Like that everybody's to it. Friday morning, for all mine are Friday stuff. This shows you I don't. Oh tweet no, but you have on. okay. Wait, 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 wait. You went for the four. You went to the four. You. Oh, when you said for no, you. No, I didn't go for for you. I went to trending. Oh, okay. So you went to trending. Okay. So we have the same thing. So uh, like, so when you went to the, you're going to the trending. No, you go to trending for you. Because when I look okay, at that, trending it's for the same me. thing. It's, it's, yeah. Trending for you. What's, what's, what's trending for Rachel I have Eva right Longoria, Eva Longoria, okay. Cruel yeah. Summer, Terrence Howard, Shannon. Okay. okay. <laughs> Steph Curry. Okay. Pump. Pump rules, secrets revealed. Pumpity pumpity. That's Vanderpump. That's Vanderpump. So that makes sense. Tiny desk. Phaedra. Tiny desk. I got, house, I got a lot of housewife stuff in here. Connor, Doja, and Tamra. Okay, there you go. See, so look, I'm gonna be honest with you. You, you, we need. We're gonna do Rachel's Twitter. <laughs> no. We're gonna do that. No, I, I, don't I, like I I'm, it. I'm just gonna bring one Twitter thing to you because. I'm, maybe I need to I need to let go because I was so into the Chica thing. Ashley, did you hear about the Chica thing or not? About it's just me in the Chica world. Did you hear about this? Donnie heard. I didn't. No, I didn't hear about it. Ashley, what the me fuck? Me, Ashley, are you is into? the same. Ashley, you Ashley, Ashley has, <laughs> you know, Ashley is the most soothing nigga ever. Ashley has the most soothing life. She's soothing. Oh, Ashley, did you go to the Denver Nuggets parade? No. Oh my God. It was so crazy. I stayed away from that. Like people were dying or something. I don't know. It's crazy. What? Yeah, I heard somebody died. At the parade? No. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody died heard. that mother. Somebody told parade, me that. Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, all right. We just <laughs> she probably saw that now. on her Twitter. <laughs> probably saw it on Twitter. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh no mail back. It's over. The podcast is over. <laughs> I gotta get some sleep. Let me tell you guys something right now. Uh, you know, probably not my best podcast. I'll be honest, but I'm just kind of, you know, I look at the bullshit. I'm kind of sick of the bullshit. You know, same shit, man. It's like I'm looking well, at the it's shit. It's gonna get what? It's gonna get what? It's gonna Say get it. worse. Well, no, because they're reporting that we're gonna get some more opinions from the Supreme Court. And it's some big cases that deal with social issues. You got affirmative. Well, that's education as well. But affirmative action. Mm-hmm. They're expecting this today, by the way. So oh, if today? we don't cover it, guys, this is why they're expecting it, which would make sense. It's a Friday. Affirmative action. Uh, student loan forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether businesses can deny queer people. <laughs> not the, not people in general, Say but bro. I'm sure it's about it. <laughs> Say, hmm? bro, the Supreme Court about to pull a John Starks. I'm just telling the y'all, Supreme y'all about Court to get about more to go angry. Over three. The Supreme Court about to go over three, man. 
Like right now somewhere. That's the why Supreme they probably <laughs> gave you this what this seven two decision because they're about to hit everybody hard. Just the when Supreme everybody Court about to pull is a praising Tony the Snell, Supreme baby. Court right now. Everybody's praising, oh, look what they did when they should have done this. And they're about to hit hard. Hit them with that heat. Let me tell you something. If, if the Supreme Court fucks it off today, I want to hear from the judge. I want him on no, the podcast. That's not going to If the Supreme Court, well, where, where, where is he on the tier? Is he on the tier? Like, is he like a the tier what? away from being on the Supreme Court? The tier. He's a federal oh, judge. Oh, no, 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 no. He's, uh, there's the Court of Appeals before him. So is there any chance that your dad could be on the Supreme Court in the future? No. I mean, no. I mean, no. Nigga, you don't know, nigga. Like, why are you, why are you I mean, playing could them? It, why are you playing could them it, like that? First off, stop. You know could it happen? Yes. But it's not. Let me tell you something. Judge, if you can hear me, <laughs> if you can hear me, Judge, this is your, your adopted son, Van. Okay? I believe in you, Judge Lindsay. And if we, Judge Lindsay, if you go to the Supreme Court, bruh, it's going to be, I will be your Harlan Crow. You know, <laughs> it, 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 I will be your, me, if, your, if your pops go to the Supreme Court, it's lit. Are you kidding me? If your pops, it. think about that. Oh, I'm in the family. Right now, I'm not in the family. <laughs> but like, if he goes into the Supreme Court, I'm going to be around here flicking cigarettes in police face. <laughs> I don't even smoke. I don't even smoke. I, I, I'll keep, like, I swear to God, I'll keep like a pack of cigarettes in the car just to flick it in the police face. Pull me over. Hey, uh, I just pull out. As soon as the oh cops pull me gosh. over, I just start smoking. There's a light up a cigarette. Hey, you mind, you mind rolling down the window? Yeah, what you want? You know how fast you were going? Fuck no. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Sir, get out of the car. I don't think you want to do this. I'm just letting you know. Oh, my god! I don't gosh. think you want to. I'm going to tell, you, tell you, you, you right now. Hold on. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't think you want to do this. I'll just be, I'm going to keep it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. I don't think you want to do this. I don't think you know who I know. <laughs> and get the judge on the phone. <laughs> just judge Lindsay of the Supreme Court. Yeah, I pull out another cigarette. Boom! Look <laughs> <laughs> in his face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we gonna, I apologize for this podcast. Van's I'm tired. I'm sick. I'm sick. We're going to come correct next week. Before we go, because we're going to have a lot to talk let about. Let me know about the Tuesday, Kim Powers, our post Juneteenth episode. Oh, Juneteenth is on uh, Monday. Monday. Rachel, are you, coming to, are you coming to the Van Lathan Lawrence Bender? Trayvon Free Juneteenth party on Monday? Yeah, I rarely miss a party. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be together on <laughs> Juneteenth. I'll say a few words. Um, oh, but, will you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, Wait, so is this a turn up or is it like a... Oh, no, 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 no. It's a turn up. It's a turn up. It's a turn up. Okay, it's I'm like, up. do I need to come dressed in certain colors? Nah, Am I man, gonna, it's going like, down. Nah, nah, nigga, it's going down. Shout out to Lawrence Bender. Yeah, I, you Shout know out. how you could tell it's going down? Because y'all won't release the location. Not you until you have to RSVP, RSVP <laughs> to get the location. That's how you know it's going down. Nah, it's going up. Van, Nick, Lawrence is going up. Everybody going to be there. Um, so, nah, it's going up. Uh, so, we'll, oh, but on Tuesday, we have a very special interview with one of the co-directors of Across the Spider-Verse. Kim Powers is going to be on the um, on the podcast. That's going to be your Juneteenth episode on Tuesday. Um, for now, you got to take your thing caps off. We do not stop learning. I'm Van Lathan Jr. I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys. <laughs>